Hi guys, welcome to another one of RT Dowlet lectures and today I want to focus on Cape Unit 1 physics and in Cape Unit 1, one of the first things that you have to examine is resolving vectors, right? That's one of the first, first concepts that you will use throughout both Unit 1 and Unit 2. Now, before we get into actually what it means to resolve a vector, we're going to do a little bit of revision on a vector quantity. So a vector quantity is basically anything which has magnitude and direction. And examples are things like force, velocity, acceleration, momentum. Now, before at CSEC, you are asked to come multiple individual vectors into a single vector called a resultant vector and what the resultant vector does is that it represents both in magnitude and direction uh, as all of the vectors combined so if I had parallel vectors I'm just saying two and three because I'm using the tip to tail rule I could attach both vectors to each other the direction will be the same and the magnitude will be the sum of individual vectors. In the same way, I could look at a 4 Newton vector and then I could have another Newton, let's say 6 Newtons in the opposite direction. Again, these are anti-parallel and for me to combine them with the tip to tail rule, making sure the vectors are in the same direction. So it's minus 2 here, which is giving me 2 Newtons in the other direction. Right? And then if you had vectors at an angle to each other from a point, what you do is that you complete a parallelogram where the resultant vector would be the diagonal of the parallelogram. So all of these were just to show you that we combined vectors to get a single resultant vector. Now what if we want to split it because that's the opposite of combination. Right? So resolving, or res well, it basically means where you take a vector. Now this vector could be at any angle here, right? So actually, I made it a little better. Right. Let's say that it's used, right? So let me say we have a vector here, and this vector is at some angle theta to the horizontal. This vector could represent any quantity, force, acceleration, etc. So one of the things we can do is we could break up this, right? So the question is, how do you break it up? Well, you resolve it by taking two components, which are always perpendicular to each other. So the parent components of this vector here are always perpendicular to each other, and they exist along the vertical and the horizontal plane. Now, taking that information, if I were to put this along the x plane, I would get VH. And perpendicular to this along the vertical plane is VV. So now you have two parent components of this vector V, and they are perpendicular to each other. Now, if you examine this a little closely, you will see that VH and VV enclose the initial resultant vector V or your initial vector V to form a right angle triangle. Now, you were given the orientation of the initial vector with respect to the angle theta. So now, because it's a right angle triangle, we're going to pull from the laws of trigonometry, right? So here, you're going to see that cos of theta will be adjacent the side adjacent to the angle will be vh and the side opposite to the angle is vv so cos is adjacent over hypotenuse and that is vh over v so vh becomes v cos of theta so now let's look at vv now right so here vv is the side opposite so sine of theta would have given me VV on V. So V sine of theta is the vertical component. Now, if I combine the vertical and the horizontal components through Pythagoras' theorem, I'm supposed to end up back with V. So let's go. So according to Pythagoras' theorem, 
vh squared plus vv squared is v squared. So that is v cos of theta squared plus v sine of theta squared is v squared. So it's v squared cos squared theta plus v squared sine squared theta is v squared. The identity of sine squared plus cos squared is 1. So v squared is equal to, so all of this is 1. So v squared is equal to v squared. Now, a lot of students say, but miss, I get confused. How do you know? Because sometimes my horizontal component is expressed in terms of sine. There is no set expression. It all comes from a derivation of where your vector is oriented. Is it oriented at theta to the horizontal or is it oriented at theta to the vertical? So let's go. So now let's look at a situation here where the same vector v is at an angle theta. Your basic information is that this vector has two parent components. The first component is always along the horizontal plane. The second is along the vertical plane. And two of them have to be perpendicular to each other such that they encase the original vector. So all of that is basically saying that they are forming a triangle here. So this is my VV and perpendicular to that is my VH. And again, they will encase the original vector as a right angle triangle. So then the laws of Triggs work. So VV is the side adjacent here. So we're going to call this adjacent. VH is the side opposite. Right? Right. So let's go. So cos of theta is adjacent VV on hypotenuse, which is V. So VV is V cos of theta. Now, if we use sine of theta, sine of theta is opposite, which is VH over V. So V sine of theta is equal to VH, right? And again, if I use Pythagoras' theorem, I'm going to get back V. Okay, so that's how I know they are correct. Now, if it is that you have an orientation and you're not too keen about or you always get confused, always look at this. The component that is near or adjacent to the angle will be represented in terms of cos of theta. The component that is directly opposite to the orientation of the angle will be expressed in terms of sine of theta. So that should help you along the way. All right. So let's talk about, <clears throat> let's talk a little bit now about uh, if you have an inclined plane, right? Because um, a lot of the questions test your ability to resolve along a plane. Now, along a plane is a little bit tricky because you're not talking about pure horizontal and vertical. Along an inclined plane, we are talking about two components, one being parallel to the plane and the second one being perpendicular. To the plane. So the reason that we have to resolve in these directions as opposed to vertical or horizontal is because the plane is aligned at an angle and the forces will either act perpendicular to the plane such as a reaction force or parallel to the plane such as any applied force okay like friction or if I'm pushing it or etc. So <clears throat> let's use the yellow one this shows you perpendicular to the plane and this dotted line here shows you parallel to the plane. So that way you can get an idea about the, about the orientation. So if you look here, right, we're going to look at the first force, which is gravity. The weight acts as gravity. Now here you're going to notice that this angle here is theta. So if you look at the orientation, right, this angle here is theta, the angle between the weight, which is a totally vertical force, as well as the normal, which is inclined to the plane, right? Now, when you work this down, you will be able to resolve W. So W, right, will have a horizontal Component, which is a horizontal, have a component, sorry, parallel to the plane, and that is W parallel, and then it would have a component here which is perpendicular to the plane. So to get it parallel to the plane, 
<clears throat> you're going to again this is w this is perpendicular and this is parallel so you still have the concept of your triangle so here you're going to say w parallel will act downwards always and w perpendicular will act downwards as well right so this is w perpendicular so <clears throat> w parallel will be a j well it'll be opposite to the angle so it's w sine of theta and the weight which is perpendicular is w cos of theta so if you examine right so again just to confirm we were talking about um, being parallel to the plane and being perpendicular to the plane now i had mentioned previously here that you are having a component of the weight being resolved perpendicular and parallel so let's see how i arrived at that now the weight is always a downward force so this downward force here would actually now because remember the plane is at an angle theta form a right angle triangle so it means this angle here i'm shading it in is really 90 minus theta now you will have your object sliding along the plane and you have the normal here and this is perpendicular to the plane so it means now that this angle here that w makes with the normal will be theta because 90 minus theta plus theta would give you 90 degrees so that is how i got that component so here you would always have the weight w sine theta and then here you would have along the plane here w cos of theta and of course if the object is stationary it simply means that these components are balanced but once you have an object having mass along the plane there is a component of the weight parallel and perpendicular 